Yeah, we did, yeah, okay. We're doing well, aren't we? Yeah, yeah rattling along. Yeah. So this picture, this bit, is universally accepted, right? This is this model of quantum mechanics that says that the, the, there is an uncertain, you can't, you know, there is an uncertainty in the position and momentum of a particle. They're not, you can't have both of them at the same time. Isn't controversial. This is still controversial, and in fact, they're not quite measuring the same thing, right? This is really measuring the position and momentum of a particle at the same time, or knowing what the position and momentum of a particle at the same time are. This is a thing called a measurement disturbance relation, right? I'm making a measurement and in the purpose, process of making the measurement, I'm disturbing the very thing I'm measuring. They're not quite the same thing. And so interestingly, people are still arguing today, are they, you know, is this thought experiment of Heisenberg's actually right? Can we beat that uncertainty relation just by being cleverer about it? And a couple of years ago, Someone came up with a way of saying, actually, yes, there is a way of defeating this. We can, we can actually do better than this in certain types of measurement. Now, it, it's a very subtle thing to try and do, because if you actually think about it, if you want to say, OK, so if you're doing this measurement disturbance thing, if I measure something, I will intrinsically disturb it just by making the measurement. And then you ask the question, so how much do I disturb it by? I want to measure how much I've disturbed this particle by, by making this measurement. Now, in order to measure how much you've disturbed it by, you need to know where, what its momentum was to start with to find out how much you've changed it by. So I need to know what its momentum was to start with. Well, then I need to measure its momentum. But we've just argued that you can't actually measure its momentum. So it's, it's a slightly circular kind of thing, that I need to know what the particle's momentum is before I started to find out how much I've disturbed it by. But that's a measurement in itself. There's a whole new field of quantum mechanics, which has just come to the fore in the last few years, the thing called weak measurement which is people have found ways of making very subtle measurements in quantum systems which don't disturb the system very much. And so you make e even subtler measurements than this. Each individual measurement you make, it turns out, is completely rubbish because actually you're doing this very subtle thing and not, you know, trying very, very gently not to disturb the system at all. And in the process, you'll find that actually each individual measurement you make isn't very good. But by averaging together a whole load of these weak measurements, you can actually learn something about the quantum mechanical properties of a system without disturbing it. People came up with this way of actually trying to do this kind of experiment, and a couple of years ago came up with a result which seemed to do better than the Heisenberg relationship said you could do. Then just last year, somebody else wrote a paper that said, actually, no, you've done the, or you, you've done the maths wrong, basically, and said that really, and it's to do with how you measure the, the, the degree of uncertainty, the degree of disturbance you've introduced. Because it's not, you need, some, you need some sort of figure of merit. Have I disturbed it a little or a lot? And there are different ways you can quantify how much you've disturbed a system. And the, the argument was, well, you've actually just used the wrong figure of merit for figuring out how much you've disturbed the system. And when we do it our way, because we're doing it right, we get back to Heisenberg's relationship again. It sounds like it's a slightly sort of uh, esoteric argument. But it turns out it has some implications because there's a, a whole field developing of a thing called quantum cryptography, where people are using quantum mechanical systems to encode messages. Obviously, it's a way of getting, you know, getting messages around without people figuring out what you're saying. So, you know, secret messages sent by code. And the beauty, at least in principle, of quantum cryptography is that if there is this relationship between making a measurement and disturbing things, then when somebody eavesdrops on your signal, listens in, just that act of, of eavesdropping, listening in, will disturb the system and you'll be able to see that your message has been tampered with. And so you can tell, they really, you know, this really is the ultimate in security because you can tell whether somebody's kind of steamed the envelope open because they'll have left this imprint in the, in the, the very thing that they were trying to measure through these measurement disturbance relations. If it turns out you can beat these measurement disturbance relations and actually detect things about that signal without disturbing things, then it means that quantum cryptography doesn't work. So getting an answer to this of can we be defeat this Heisenberg uh, measurement uh, disturbance relation has very fundamental implications for whether this entire field of quantum cryptography is doomed to actually never be any use for anything. It's fascinating, right? This is just something that Heisenberg put out there as this elegant little kind of uh, back of the envelope demonstration as to how there was this problem with trying to both, you know, trying to measure something without disturbing it. Here we are almost 100 years later, and we still haven't figured out actually whether he was right or not. And actually figuring out whether he was right or not will have these much bigger implications for, for whether quantum cryptography works or not. This weak measurement, Yeah. how does that work? What, what, what are they doing? They're not shining photons in. They're, there's a whole other video, I think, is the short answer to that. Alright, give me a taste of what will be in that other video. So what do you do in weak measurement? If you have, so you can buy, with different types of quantum system, 
you can set things up so that the amount you can you can kind of have if you like in you can almost almost actually in practice have a dial which is dictates how strongly one particle will interact with another just from the way you set up one particle then you can you, you can just have a, you know you can have a, a piece of apparatus which will actually allow you to dial up or down how strongly another particle is going to interact with that particle great and what you do in weak measurement is you dial that all the way down almost to zero which means that there is almost no interaction between the particles which means that you've disturbed the system very little but of course it means that actually you get very little information because there's been very little interaction and there is this clever trick, uh, you know, the, I don't, the thing I don't fundamentally understand about this is I think it ought to be a zero-sum game, right? That actually, you know, you're getting so little information that I have to make like, thousands and thousands of measurements to actually learn anything at all. And then surely I'm just disturbing the thing just by making thousands of little observations instead of one big one. Turns out that's not the case, right? You can actually learn stuff without disturbing the system very much at all by averaging together a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of measurements. Well, so they say, someone else disagree. Well, no, no, everyone agrees. And I think people agree that weak measurement more or less works. Whether or not it's a way of getting around the Heisenberg uh, measurement disturbance relation is another question. Then actually, photons going in a very wide range of possible directions will all end up going through the lens.